so I'm back now All right, so can you hear me or is there a voice breaking problem still? Okay, so by mistake first half of this today's session was not recorded because you forgot to turn on the recording okay and All right, so, okay, so let's start with where we, we left. All right, now let me try to answer one question. The question is, always number of mappers should be num greater than or equal to number of reducers. There is no such correlation, not necessarily, all right? There is no such correlation that the number of reducers will be greater than or less than no. Okay. It will be depending on your need. You can increase number of reducers more than the mapper. If each of your mapper is producing too much of content, too much of data that requires multiple reducers. All right. Like for example, in our case, we are doing a just simple word count had we been doing a little more complex processing in the reduce phase we would basically increase number of reducers more than what we have right now okay shashikant All right, so moving on. All right, so this is clear to all. Now, all right, so here, so this is a general question. So how many reducers should there be? If there are, by default, the reducer count is generally one. If there are too many reducers, there is a too much of shuffling. If you can see, total number of shuffling happened from each mapper task to each reducer. One, two, three, four, five, six, which means total number of transfer of the data is number of mappers into number of reducers okay because from each map the data transfer to each reduce will happen all right so if there are too many too many reducers the effort of shuffling is too high if there are too few reducers the computation will take a lot of time therefore having so you generally tune it to have the num to to, to, you have the total number of slot you you make number of reducers equal to total number of slots in general meaning total number of slot as in how many reducers how many nodes are there on your on your cluster out of those nodes how many nodes are free 
okay so based on that you make the call of number of reducers all right now sometimes partitioning the data properly partitioning as in as we said some of the keys go to one reducer while some of the keys go to another as you can see in this diagram output of map is being split into two parts part a and part b okay part a will go to the first reducer part b will go to the second reducer right so which means which means that which means that continuously we'll have to if which means if we can split this data more uniformly or more properly then our reducers will get to process equal amount of data if imagine that our partitioner is bad and it's creating the keys such that 90% of the keys are on one side and 90% uh, 10% of the keys are on another reducer which means that one reducer will be overloaded while other reducer is running empty even if you keep increasing the reducer tasks there are high chances that one of the reducers will be swamped will be will be overloaded with the with, with the computation right so sometimes it is very important to partition the keys such that by yourself then depending on depending on our automatic partitioning of by, by hadoop hadoop generally partitions the key by their ascii values and it just divide, divides it into arbitrary two sets based on the ascii values right so that may not be true sometimes for example if your data has got keys which in which the ascii values division is does not make any sense then you might have to define your own partitioner for example if you want to divide your data based on gender based on gender whether male or female right so you can create your own partitioner all right and say that this is my partitioner out of the key value generated my map reduce i will tell whether to go on 0th or first or second or third reducer okay that's the role of partitioner partitioner tells that okay the key which is generated by map reduce based on that key partitioner takes a call on which reducer this key should be going to okay now there are three variables available to partitioner first the key second the value then third total number of reduce task which you configured in the job you configured that how many reduce tasks are there that will be provided to you all right and why so because accordingly partitioner will be return will be returning 0 to uh, basically it will return 0 to n minus 1 where n is number of tasks okay number of maximum reduce task is n so partition can get partition can only return values from 0 to n minus 1 okay the partition the, the reduce tasks are named from 0 to 1, 0 to n minus 1 okay and parti get partition function has to tell get partition function has to tell on which node does it need to go okay so my voice is still breaking all right is it bad or better now is not good not clear so i need to think of something because the network connectivity is good
network connectivity is good but i'm not able to figure this out all right <clears throat> All right, so let me, let me, so this is how you do the partitioning, okay? And how, what do you do after you have created partitioner? You can see here, this is my partitioner. I have created this. Here, it's a little bit different logic. It says, if the key's length is greater than zero and the key is starting with all the alphabets lesser than k then send it to zero earth reducer otherwise send it to first reducer so we return zero and one and so on and how do you we tell how do we tell uh, hadoop to run it in the driver we tell that this is my partition partitioner all right so based on this, the partitions will be decided. Okay. Sounds okay? So this is what is called partitioner. To basically balance or partition the data between, between the reduce, reduce tasks. Now, there is something called combiner. Combiner is an interesting function. So those who remember our problem of counting the characters would, if, if you remember the problem correctly, each of the node will be containing the alphabet and the uh, uh, alphabet as the key. And these alphabets will be in millions of numbers. right so these alphabets are in billions of numbers say i'm talking about the problem where we were doing the character frequency so susma's question is it's better to set number of partition no no not really not really it all depends all depends okay So, okay, okay. So, you mean to say it is better to set number of partition. So, partitioner always have to be equal to actually the number of reducers. Right? I'm sorry, I confused it with the other question. Yeah. So, partition, number of partitions your partitioner will be creating will be equal to, e e equal to the number of reducers. Right? And you will try to make it such that you break your input keys into equal amount of data instead of instead of uh, making it skew you have to make basically the whole objective is that how many keys go to first one how many key go to second one and how many key go to the third reducer that is decided by the partitioner okay by default there is a there is a simple simple partitioner available now there is something called combiner function combiner is an interesting concept combiner operates on each node here before the data is given out to to partitioner okay and the purpose of a combiner is to combine lot of data on the node itself before transferring the data onto other nodes okay imagine the way we did the word counting the way we did the word counting we did the let's say we build our our character counting program the the the, the character counting program and on each node the overall output of map map mapper task is a1 a1, A1, and so on, a million times, okay? A million times, right? And similarly, the output of, output of the, uh, I mean, similarly, there will be B, 
thousands of times and so on if because all we did was we took each character printed out one with it key is character value is one so at the end result before the reduce phase has even started the the data to be transferred from mapper tasks to reducer is too high can't we compress it can't we can't we you know reduce it if we could sum it up here itself instead of saying like this if we could say it like this okay it will be great right instead of 1 million numbers we convert it into 26 numbers okay at the end of it the out the data that should ideally be transferred from one node to another should be just 26 numbers right because we are basically computing the frequency of characters so all right all right no voice to anybody or is it only pratik all right so let me so did you get the understanding of a combiner function objective of a combiner function is to reduce the overhead from mapper data transfer from mapper to the reducer okay so so it runs on the same node after map has finished okay processes the output of map helps in minimizing the data transfer but it does not replace reducer okay the definition of the definition of uh, of a combiner is exactly like a reducer it takes a key and multiple values two values basically it takes two values and and a key and then converts them into a value okay so i'll show you that so let's take a case of a combiner reducer mapper care count okay here you can see that this is my combiner function and all it is doing is it's basically summing up the values okay so basically it's exactly like your it's exactly like as if the reduce is happening on the same node there is a little bit of difference in the definition although if you see a combiner essentially extends reducer right and then does the job there is a one major difference between who can become a good candidate to a combiner 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 is is um, uh, cumulative and there is a, there is a good word for it but let's not confuse that all right so combiner is essentially from the signature perspective is similar to the reduced task right you can see that it's a reduced task and so on right now but there is a minor difference in the combiner okay combiner will be called multiple times for different different values say there is a key called a and the values for a is a 1 2 3 4 6 7 okay so this for this to to combine this values a is the key this is our key and our values are these okay to combine these values together reducer will operate on all the values in a single shot okay reducer will operate on all the values in a single shot but a combiner will not do that combiner will be called on arbitrary 
subsets of this these values okay so imagine you have sum so sum will be called on maybe 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 ones so you will get what this will give us how, how much it will give us 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 10 all right now again the same function this is my uh, here the sum is my combiner function and 5 6 and 7 might get called again and now we will have 18 and once that finishes now the combiner combination will happen recursively on the values resulted okay which means it will become 28 right now do you notice something what what exactly is going on basically the one the node which is running mapper is trying to combine the values before sending to to the reducer okay this is your choice absolutely this will you will do this to minimize the amount of data transfer from from mapper to to reducer right so you create something called combiner now the only problem with the combiner is only those functions which can be which will result in same no matter how they are applied on values only those functions are suitable so summation will result in the same value no matter how they are applied similarly max will always return in the same manner so if, if you take a max here instead of some had our combiner function been max has our combiner function will be max before giving the values to reducer and overloading the reducer we are trying to help re reducer by taking the load on each map okay so max of 1 2 3 4 is 4 and max of 5 6 7 is 7 and then the next map will max will be 7 and 4 so the max is 7 so effectively whether you do it all in one shot or if you see if you do the max of all of these that's also 7 right that's also 7 so and similarly summation of all the values is also 28 so summation is a function which can be applied recursively by breaking down into arbitrary size of sets and again and again combining the values the the overall output will always be same so only such functions like summation max min do you think min is a suitable function for combiner do you think min is a suitable function for combiner so let's take a min and let me replace this with min okay so if we do min here it will result in one and if we'll do min here it will result in five and if we do min of five and one five and one as in result of the previous sections okay so we are applying this recursively and this is equal to this one right this whole process is equal to this one, each other right so so is is this example clear now a question to you is 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 average a valid function valid combiner function And why so?
okay okay so only e okay so sasikant do you think that average is a valid combiner function it will result will it will average give result correct if we apply on 1 2 3 will it be okay will will this be okay then average of 1 and 2 combined and then we have 3 and we do average of average of this one okay which is how much average of 1.5 and 3 and that will be how much 2.25 right while the average of 1 2 3 is how much 2 right so therefore average is not a valid combiner function so is, uh, did everybody got what i mean to say basically when the co a combiner is applied in a divide and conquer fashion by the mapper task meaning if there is a huge result set half of it will divide it into portions and on each portions our combiner will be applied and whatever result is the combiner on each portion that will be combined further using combiner function sounds good to you should i ask some more questions is so root mean square value or our function f on x1 x2 x3 and xn is defined like this okay we have up to xn is defined as as square root of square root of x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square x3 square and so on till xn square and the whole thing divided by n so this is our combiner function so is this valid combiner function or not I'll show you Tuntun, not worry. Okay. So if we have two values, x1 and x2, okay, x1 and x2, combiner function essentially will do x1 to the power 2 plus x2 to the power 2 and then a square root of all of this divided by 2 and then compute the square root this is what is it going to do all right so do you think if there had been like 3 x1 x2 x3 it will become plus x to the x3 to the power 2 and divided by 3 so do you think it is a valid combiner function okay good it's not a valid combiner function it, had there been nothing dividing it had there been nothing dividing it had the our function been this one do you think it is a combi valid combiner function I 
okay good yes in that case it is because you can see it right good good so is everybody clear about combiner function what can become a combiner and what cannot be become a combiner all right this is far far more important because lots of people make a mistake in defining a combiner function and you can generally convert a combiner function in a, a, a function into into a valid combiner by little bit tweaking okay now getting back to your question so the way you can define a combiner is by using the driver here you can see i have defined a partitioner i have defined a reducer and there will be something called a combiner also somewhere here this is the combiner here okay here i can say i can say step combiner all right so let's just run so you can see that it has computed the frequencies and what i did was you can see this i'll show you in a bigger font i did a computation i did a computation that with and without combiner here this one essentially is my letter count the character count exercise which i gave you so in this one i i ran this one with and without our combiner function and i noticed if if you see number of bytes written and okay let me show you this something with combiner number of bytes read is this much okay 13 12 number of byte reads is quite high and map reduce framework i think this is okay now here you can see that okay here map output records are these many okay so i mean uh, let me let me show you so almost everything is map output records and then map map output records are these many map output bytes these many combined output record re reduce input groups okay reduce input records are 92 okay and here if you see reduce input records are these many okay here total number of reduce input records are 92 while in the above total number of input records to the reduce function are these many right so which means we have suddenly changed the whole equation and cpu time if you see cpu time is in the second one is 12 seconds while in the first one the cpu time is 23 seconds okay here it's hardly 12 seconds so we have suddenly made our whole process twice as faster okay and if if you there are more more number of things you will notice so here total number of mega seconds taken by reduce task is how much so so do you do you understand how fast have we made using combiner 
at least we have increased our overall CPU computation twice. Perfect. Now moving on. Okay. Now the data locality optimization part. All right. Now we have got. We have. <clears throat> Data locality optimization is that the map task, this this colored one, is sent to the bluish one. Okay, so HDFS block is made available to the map reduce task. So this is the best case scenario where map task and HDFS block are on the same machine, while this one is on the same machine, but uh, sorry this is not on the same machine but on a on a different different machine but same rack these are three racks in a data center this is a single data center containing three racks so my hdfs block is on the same rack but different machine same rack means same subnet now there could be a third scenario the C scenario where my data is on another rack completely. So Hadoop prefers A over B and B over C and this is called data locality optimization and there could have been a D also had there been another data center and we had one node here and one node there. That would be very, very rarely done. Okay. So this is called a data locality optimization. Now, question to you is, can reducer take the benefit of data locality optimization? All right. The answer is no, because for a reducer, the data will anyway have to be transferred from multiple nodes to to one node. Now, if you have to store a file with a replication factor of three on which all nodes will Hadoop store this file. Say you are on Hadoop one, and you are copying the file from Hadoop one locally to HDFS on which file on which all node if we had say hundreds of nodes right now we have just four or five nodes if we had hundreds of nodes on which nodes Hadoop will save the replication replica copy quickly All right, so am I doing something wrong? Different tracks. Now, right, right. So the idea is what Prasanth has suggested. Basically, the first one will be on the local node, the node from which we are copying the data. Okay. And the other two will be off the rack, okay, meaning on a different rack and another. So basically, this strategy keeps on changing all the time. All right. So they have uh, made some modifications to it recently. 
so the idea is if you store data closer say if you are storing replica closer to the first replica the it is high chances that i mean it will be easier for data access but in case there is a fire in this data center if both the data are located very closely there are chances that bo both the nodes get lost therefore there is a tendency to keep the third backup copy really really far okay so basically two copies are closer and third copy is generally far this strategy i think this is wrong i have to modify this okay now now how does hadoop know which ones are closer which ones are farther okay so first you tell hadoop that you gave each node a folder kind of structure you represent your each node in the form like your node n1 here is represented as switch1 slash rack1 slash node1 in the form of folder structure so while you are configuring so while you are configuring your nodes you will define each node in the form of this okay and how will hadoop compute okay that which ones are closer and which ones are farther based on this structure since we have converted our topology in the form of folders you know s1 slash r1 slash n1 so based on the number of lengths you have to cross to reach another we compute the distances so node to go from node 1 to node 2 we have to go from here and then here or you can say it this way node 1 and node 2 has common ancestor called rack 1 and what is the distance of the common ancestor the i mean i mean the nearest uh, common ancestor okay so it is 2 and the distance between node 1 and node 4 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 per 4 all right because node 1 and node 4 has a common ancestor called switch and the total total length total distance of node 1 to the parent and node 4 to the parent is 2 plus 2 okay so this is how this is how you define the network topology i'll give you a real example also okay so this whole thing is also known as rack awareness okay understanding the whole network as a tree similar to file path a slash b slash c and this is done using a using a property called topology dot script dot file name okay while configuring our hadoop we can specify this in our configuration so on hadoop one etc hadoop okay we have conf and topology okay all right
okay so it's not included here but you can include it you can include in in your hdfs course site and in this you can actually set the property name You can basically add one more property here saying and and can define a config here a script file okay this script file will be converting IP address to IP address to a folder kind of structure the default behavior is to basically convert dots into slashes like this okay which means if there is a difference on on the last one the nodes are closer if the difference is on the second level the nodes are little farther if difference is on this level the nodes are further farther far, further distant and if the this uh, these values are different then nodes are even farther and that happens again by converting this ip address into sort of a folder structure by replacing dots with slashes all right so that is how you define the network rack awareness similarly now th this is okay with everybody right so the distance between node 1 and node 1 itself is zero and node 1 and node 2 this node 1 and this node 2 is that okay with everyone now if you have two data centers data center one and data center two so that biggest distance here is between n1 which is on this node and n4 All right. So this this is how you define your rack awareness. Now, okay. So here are few questions to you. The data generated by Mapper by the mapper is given to the reducer and then it is sorted and suffered yes or no good 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 so everybody is okay with that so so the out first the data is sorted and then it is then the, it is sent to the reducers okay now mappers can only generate a single key value pair for all input split input value for each record can mapper generate only single value single key value good All right now by default there is only one reducer in case of a streaming job no each map can generate multiple values it's not single key value each map can generate multiple values all right multiple key values see here for each map we gave a line and it generated multiple key values okay by default there is one reducer right right this is correct moving on okay now 
वट इज द रोल ऑफ जॉब ट्रैकर ए और बी Yes, A is for task tracker and B is for job tracker. Good. All right. Now, next question. The map logic is executed preferably on the nodes that have the required data. Yes or no? yes good good all right now now this is good question so the whole of the hdfs block available on a node is fed to the mapper yes or no right why because input split need to be created and there would be movement of the data from one node to another right okay now next question you have asked me too many questions i must i have to ask you some questions at least all right where does hadoop store the result of reducer hdfs or local file system excellent great great no actually the answer is hdfs okay all right where does hadoop store the intermediate data such as output of map tasks in hdfs or local file system or memory हेलो या सो ऑल राइट नाउ इज इट ऑडिबल ना सो वेयर डज हडूप स्टोर द इंटरमीडिएट डेटा Are you sure? Why would Hadoop store the intermediate data into HDFS if it stores in HDFS? They because it's not required in the network, right? It's only for transfer from one place to another, and then it's useless. Hmm. 
because it will be again merged with the other data and it will be fairly useless so memory you can't keep it because we are talking about terabytes of data and you cannot keep it in the ram so it's basically partly in memory because it's a memory supported file system but we call it local file system perfect so all of you are with me all right great great so as an assignment for today so today's assignment partly i have finished by asking questions the assignment for today is to implement basically this one without any sentence by sentence input text reader you don't need to do that just implement a simple simple uh, you know word suggestions okay just implement a simple word suggestions based on wikipedia given the wikipedia's data gather the data and generate key and values and try to solve it all right so that is sort of an assignment for today now java code is available here java code is available to you on our my courses so okay i think shashi shashikant means to say ask that uh, do we need to write in java code is that your question i mean any language you feel comfortable either streaming job will do for me or a java will do here the logic will not suffice because logic anyway i have told okay so basically do either in java or any other python streaming or or maybe shell scripting howsoever you can you can get the work done okay let me make a note of your question prashant i will have a proper explanations in place okay Hello 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 For some reason today I am having a great difficulty with this thing I never had this problem earlier All right So So all of you please uh, work on the the assignment which have been given and once you're done with it just let me know that you're done and okay and then you can have a look at your answers all right so moving on so we have 15 more minutes so let me so let me start with pig okay let me start with pig all right all right why is the voice breaking
Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. All right. Yes. Yes, we are continuing. So, is it any better now or is it still the same? All right. So, yes. So, today let's continue with our peak discussions further. All right. So before before going forward, let's understand what we have learned so far. We understood first in in the beginning of the session that why do we require these new sets of tools, and what are the challenges with existing tools? By by the way of uh, the questions which we dealt with, we tried to solve those. Now, afterwards, we went into the details of HDFS. Then we went into the details of, of uh, the distribution of the work over the cluster. Okay. And afterwards, we discussed the MapReduce paradigm and the whole dynamics by using various kinds of examples and by using various kinds of problems. Okay. So everything under under map reduce has been fairly done there are few questions which i need to answer maybe i have to take out some time first one for uh, the the question which somebody has asked here uh, explain xml and sequence file input the second thing is an architectural detail architectural detail of yarn those are the two things which are pending on the map, map map reduce part so far rest of the things are done now so when we were doing map reduce we all observed that for doing a simple thing such as join or for doing a simple thing such as group by or, or filter it is too much of a hassle meaning it is you need to write a lot of code now can we again the uh, voice is not there hello all right so 
we noticed that there are a lot of challenges with map reduces in terms of it requires a lot of work so that is when people came up with an idea of pig pig is a framework while pig latin is the language by the by which you control pig okay so your interaction with pig is going to be through pig latin all right so these are few questions left let me map side reduce and okay i'll see that because what you're referring to a maybe something which we have already covered okay now so there are two extremes one is sql where all you needed to do was select star from this and join with that and you get the output the other is extreme is sql uh, sorry other extreme is your map reduce where you had to, even for a small thing you had to write these jobs and somewhere between is your pig all right pig is generally used for etl and then research on data and iterative processing hello hello this is bothering me too much <sighs> all right so so basically some some engineers worked on it and and build a tool which it, which does not require too much of map reduce too much of uh, programming instead can be as simple as your sql query okay so this is a basic philosophy why pig were designed in in first place for me it shows that the voice is well and is going okay all right now this is the basic philosophy of pig where we talk about pig eats anything as in whether data is structured unstructured relational or semi structured pig handles all kind of data unlike in sql you need to first create a table where you define the data types of each column that is not the case with pig okay and then pig lives anywhere so it's uh, is still not coming purushottam or is it breaking uh, all right so pig lives anywhere meaning it's not only designed for hadoop it is also designed for other systems and pig aims to become the the sql of the distributed computing big aims to become the sql of big data see pigs are domestic animals meaning they are controllable so the way pig has been designed bottom up is it gives a enormous amount of control in the hands of users so that optimization can be done at various levels okay and fourth is pigs fly pig is designed for the performance okay the the main objective of pig other than simplifying the work is the performance okay so there are a lot of things pig provides you for performance i'll show you that and then 
controllable when we say controllable domestic animals basically pig provides you a lot of ways of customizing the functions functionality of pig all right now to install pig is pretty straightforward you can download pig from their website extract and unzip it and and move it to the right location and afterwards make java available to uh, in java home okay once it is done that pig should be ready to run pig minus x local is it does not require any hadoop system also you should note few things such that pig does not have any server side pig only has the client side pig doesn't have any server side okay and once your pig minus x local is working then you don't need to worry about anything all you need to do is you need to set tell pig where is the hadoop configuration from hadoop hadoop configuration pig need to figure out which one is name node and which ones are data nodes and so on and and so that it can basically start running its queries it okay so once that happens uh, then your pig is ready to run but in our case you do not have to do anything other than run going to the command prompt ssh and do pig and you get the command prompt properly so this is your grunt this is where you will be working all right so this is your pig command prompt from where you're working in case you want to run locally you don't want to bother the hadoop cluster you can do pig minus x local and it would be good enough okay all right so all right so for for, for cloud labs you can simply ssh to any of the nodes all the nodes have pig okay and all right you can you can ssh all right so the data has been added to students data and you can start working now so there is something called local mode as i was explaining the way mr unit provided you with the local mode of hadoop in which you don't need to log into the server to run on hadoop similarly the same mock up is also provided in the form of pig minus x local okay when you when you deal with pig minus x local you basically don't need hadoop installation and whenever you do my ls it basically shows the local file system all right now you can run pig with the first argument as a script name so that pig will run all the commands which are written in that script similar to sql script you can uh, you can create your script by putting all the commands in a single file and then running this way or you can run comma a single command of pig by saying pig minus e and then providing a query query in this case is simple ls okay so ls is basically a command a, con a convenient command for hdfs so when you are inside pig if you do ls it will list down the hdfs files okay see all the in, uh, options available with pig by, with minus h now okay so the the command prompt is grunt where you type he, this is where you are going to type all the commands okay here you can also type all the hdfs commands okay you you can type all the hdfs commands like cat you can type ls you can type you can also say ch mode and and so on okay and also you can kill a job kill a running job 
and so on. While you are on the prompt, you can execute a script as well by the way of exec or run. If you do exec, it will run in the same memory. And if you do run, it will run, execute as a separate process. Now, the basic construction of a pig script is each processing step result in new set. Any step results in new set. Pig is the basic commands are insensitive, case insensitive, but the user functions are case sensitive. There are multi line com com commands with uh, slash asterisk and, and this way, and single line commands are similar to SQL. Now, have a look, have a very, very quick look into what we are trying to do here with pig script, just to get you a feel that how, how does a pig script look like. Say we have this file, which is basically four column tab separated. All we want to do is compute the average CPU and basically group by CPU and find average of the value. Group by the ticker, this is second column is ticker, this is the stock data, this is stock exchange, this is the stock data, and date, and the value, okay? So all we are trying to do is average value over a period of time of a stock, okay? So ideally, for these kind of scenarios, we will do a group by, and that's all, okay? So that's exactly what we did was here, load the file, group by, then iterate over the record and generate the average value. That's all we have done here, okay? We will go into the details. You don't need to panic because this just to, uh, you know, give a quick idea that this is how your query would look like. Now, first first thing is each, each of these commands, this is command, it says divs equals to load my data from this file and these are going to be my columns, right? And dump my data to check what is there in the data and then explain what is there in my record and so on. This is what a pig query looks like. We'll go into the details of each and everything, okay? So nothing to hurry about, all right? So rest of the things we will take care in the next session which will be day after tomorrow. Tomorrow is a holiday, I mean, for me, okay? So tomorrow there will be no session, and day after tomorrow will be our session. Finish all your assignment tomorrow, and then we can go ahead, all right? Great. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye.